Now using the str2l and str2 family of functions that we have talked about in the previous video, you can check up top. Uh, I want to just convert a like a string that has many numbers all separated with a space like we have here. And I want to actually just sum them all. So get a sum with all the numbers in an actual uh, integer, not just as a string. How can we do that using str2l? Now that's very straightforward. It's a first we can have as many uh, as many numbers as we want in this string that we supposedly read from a text file or something. So we're gonna have a while loop. I'm gonna talk about the condition in just a bit. We're not gonna go over it yet, but we are sure gonna have to use that uh, that end pointer that we have talked about, right? So I'm gonna actually instantiate here an end pointer. And either end pointer, I guess I'm gonna call it cursor this time. So simple enough. And this cursor, I'm gonna instantiate it or initialize it with the beginning of the string str. Okay, so this is just gonna point to the first character inside our string in the beginning. Now what I want is to take a look at the cursor and convert whatever number is at the cursor itself. How can we do that? Well, we can use the str2l function here. You can say str2l and I want to convert whatever is at the cursor, not as str, because str is just gonna stay at uh, the first Right, str is always going to point at the first number. So I want to convert whatever is at the cursor. And I want, well, what's gonna, what's gonna end ptr be? Uh, this is a bit more complicated, but if you think about it, what I want is, well, look at the cursor, so look at 200, convert whatever is in there, and actually move the cursor uh, over 200. Right, so that we don't read 200 again, because we don't want to, right? So I'm just gonna pass in the reference to the cursor so that it gets overwritten afterwards. And lastly, I want the base, which is going to be just 10. Okay, and I want to actually store this into something. I guess we're just gonna do, let's say a long int x equals that. Okay, so now we're basically reading every single number, but how, how do we know when to stop? This is a bit of a of an interesting question. Now let's think about the condition that should be added in this while loop. When do we actually stop? Because if we keep on reading numbers, we just kind of keep on reading numbers forever and ever. So we never really stop. In this case, what we can do is notice that the last number, like right after the last number, we have no other characters. So if we are exactly at the end of the string with our cursor, we can say that we've finished reading the whole strings. You can say e while our cursor is not at the end of the string, how do we say that? Well, the end of the string is just that pointer, like str, plus its length. So plus str len of str, right? So this, is, this specifies basically the end of that. Uh, it's a pointer to the end of that string. Now all we need to do is just sum all of these axes up. So I can say here, uh, let's say long int sum equals zero and just sum plus equals x. And I don't know, let's say printf sum is percent, let's say ld like such n and sum. Ld because it's a long int, but you can use an int here without issues. So if I try to run this, you'll notice in the debugger here, if I say sum, it's 333 because 200 plus 22 plus 111 is 333. Now, of course, there are some issues with the way we're parsing it. So you're gonna have to be careful if you're doing it, if you're doing this in your own project, because if you, for example, have leading spaces after the last uh, number, you'll notice that if I run it, the program never stops. It just kind of continues on and on and on and on and on. So that's because it just kind of stops uh, reading, our cursor just kind of stops at the character right after the last digit of the last number, which is not really the end of the string because we have a space here. So what you're probably gonna have to do is increment this cursor manually after every single number that has been read. So I'm gonna say here another while loop that says, uh, dereference the cursor. So look at the character that your cursor points at. And if that guy is a, is a space, 
then simply skip over it and say cursor plus plus. I'm gonna actually add it here below so that it's much more legible. And if I try to run it now, you'll notice I get our sum 333 and everything is nice and dandy, it works. It's amazing. Now, another issue is if you have, for example, uh, commas, so if you have a comma here and a comma here, some uh, text files may be formatted this way. So you're gonna have to actually uh, skip them as well because as you might notice, if I run it, we're gonna end up in an infinite loop again. That's because we have to skip manually over those commas. So I'm gonna have to add here if that is a space or our cursor is looking at a comma, then as well, skip over it. So if I try to run it now, you'll notice I'm gonna get again 333. And what is nice about this implementation is that if you, as I said, if you specify here a zero instead of a 10, and you, for example, specify some hexadecimal number, let's say instead of 22 and 111, let's add, I don't know, uh, let's say zero X, just F, right? So that should be the number 15 in decimal. If I try to run this, you'll notice I'm gonna get 215 because 200 plus 15 is an, uh, is the sum of those two and it actually uh, interpreted both in their bases respectively. So this guy was interpreted as a uh, base 10 and this guy was interpreted as base 16 without you doing anything or almost any change to the code itself. So this is, I think, very cool. And that's about it really. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. If you do have any questions, do leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Take care, bye.